Hi Stampers, I'm Meg from Loven Stamps and I have a project to share with you that features the Needle and Thread stamp set, which is one of the photorealistic stamp sets from the Occasions catalog. And it is absolutely gorgeous. And this card is sort of a collage masking card that really shows off um, the really amazing detail in this stamp set. So let me bring this up really close so you can see, but really um, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I have some tips for you on how to make these photoreal stamps really pop and give you the most detail possible when you're using the Stampin' Up! Classic pads. Um, there's some really neat hints to that. And I will tell you more about creating this masking spot in the middle. So if you're not familiar with masking, this is a video you definitely need to watch. So grab your Stamps the Mail Club kit and let's get stamping. Okay, this one is my favorite because I love the way the stamping looks like designer series paper. And I have another version of this that I can show you too um, that's done in blues. But whenever people look at it in person, they, they think that it's actually designer series paper um, pre-printed because the stamps are just make such beautiful images. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my berry burst in half. I'm going to um, hold off on layering my old olive, but I'm going to slide my um, paper piercing mat underneath my... Um, grid paper here. There you can kind of see it there underneath so that I just get really nice images. And actually I'm going to turn it sideways so that it matches the orientation of my paper here so that uh, it's really easy to keep my stamping where it belongs on paper. Okay, so first things first, um, I am going to create a spot to um, mask here. But before I do that, I'm going to add the stitching and I have these cross stitches here, so I'm going to position this sort of down near the bottom-ish, and I'm going to end right here because this is where my embellishments are going to cover the seam. Um, it can be a little tricky to line up the stamps end-to-end -end exactly, so by covering it, then you don't have to worry so much. Okay. And now I need to wait because if I stamp my second stitch line, I might not get it in the right place. So I'm going to take my Berry Burst ink and then stamp my greeting. And I love it. People like you make the world a better place. And now that I know where that greeting is, then I can go back and add my other stitch line. Okay, this one isn't covered up unless you make a crazy boo-boo. We'll see how I do here. Um, you want to get it as close as possible. Nah, it's okay. We'll probably um, drag our die cut up to cover that just a little bit so that it's not so obvious. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is put a mask across here. And here is, you can see I've used this one before. I'm going to place this piece of paper right here. Now, you can make it as big as you want, but I've got mine pretty much butted up right against the edge of the stitch lines on the top and bottom. Um, if you're worried about it shifting, you can go ahead and um, just tack it down a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and position mine. I think I'll be all right. So now, um, next thing I'm going to do is when I do collage stamping, I like to start with the biggest images first. And so my biggest image really here is this big flower. And so I'm going to start with the flower and go ahead and use my stamp here. Now, if you haven't seen um, yet, I like to get a really nice um, needlepoint image with lots of detail. I like to take my bone folder and push the ink down in the pad just a little bit. You can kind of see it getting a little bit lighter in that area. And what that does is it um, just primes the pad so that there's the perfect amount of ink available right at the surface for my stamp. Um, sometimes the new uh, foam pads, the firm foam pads, release so much ink, they give you a beautiful image, but it can overwhelm the distinctive um, stamp detail. So. I'm going to go ahead and stamp a couple flowers on here. And then without moving my paper, I'm going to kind of keep my hand there. I'm going to come back here with my berry burst and I'm going to add some of these stitched lines. And the stitching in this stamp set is so much fun. Um, it just, it's really very elegant and very pretty. So you can use it for lots of different occasions. Okay. So I've got those, and you see that I varied the height a little bit. This one I went up a little, and that one I went down a little, just to sort of keep things flowing a little bit more organically. And then I'm going to come back with my, um, my trio of flowers and my bigger flower here, and or my smaller flower. And I'm going to stamp a couple of these. And adding around, and I like to... Um, sort of cover the area around the mask as much as possible so that I'm really getting a distinct edge to my mask. And then I'm going to go back. This is my favorite stamp in the set and add these 
this little flower trio here. And we make some of my images go off the edge of the paper. And then I'm um, kind of going to come back here at the end and add some leaves. And this image here um, actually has two different um, leaves. I want to make sure it's really clean, so I'm going to use my stamping chamois because I am not going to ink both um, parts of the stamp. I'm going to ink just this part because then I can uh, have a little bit more control over where my images are going. So I'm going to pop that up there. Okay, and then I'm going to use this little guy here to add a couple more leaves. I'll put one down here and I'll add one here. I'm going to add one kind of goes off the top corner. Maybe one popping out from under my paper here. Okay, so that gives us um, a pretty good, I think we'll add one more. Again, I'm just going to ink just the smaller of this leaf set, and I'm going to put it here on this smaller flower at the bottom. Okay, all right, so then when we take our mask off, ta-da! I love that. Isn't that like the fun reveal? Uh, we have a really nice mask spot in the middle. Okay, the next thing to do is to take your uh, old olive linen thread, which I apparently put in a safe place. So you could also use your linen thread. Don't you love that when you put something in a safe place so you always know where it is and then of course it's like, yeah, gone. So anyway, um, you can use your regular linen thread too. The old olive um, thread is a lot like this in texture. It's really gorgeous and I love that it comes in olive since we've always just had regular sort of natural colored linen thread. Okay, so you're gonna tie a bow. And the old olive thread does come with your Stamps in the Mail Club kit. Um, it's one of the products you'll get a full roll of that, and I'm sure you will love having it. Now, you might notice that my bow here is really loose, and uh, that is perfectly okay, because I'm going to show you a trick here for getting that um, to be nice and tight on your finish card. And so the way you're going to do that, I'm going to get this kind of where I want, so I'm going to flip it to the back, and I'm going to put some snail adhesive across here, and I'm going to... Go ahead and take some slack out so that it's really tight here and see how there's all this slack. I'm going to flip it over to the front, make sure it's just where I want it, and then I'm going to press that into the adhesive. So all the slack is here on the back of my card, and it just looks like I'm capable of tying a perfectly nice um, bow there on the front. Okay, so this is going to layer here now. I'll go ahead and stick this down. And then we're going to um, add some embellishments to this. And I promised you I'd show you kind of how to cover this. But you'll see really like that stitching line doesn't even show um, so much because there's so much interest and excitement going on in the front of this card. All right, these three little flowers and our little button you're going to stamp. So let me make sure my stamp's clean here because um, I'm going to stamp this one in Blushing Bride. So I'm going to use my chamois here to get that nice and clean. It's like an ink magnet. It just comes right off. And I'm going to go ahead and ink this in Blushing Bride. And then I kind of like to stamp upside down on these. Um, so you're going to kind of position these where you go. There's a little divot in this flower here that you can kind of see where it goes. And then just use a stamp to press down in the back. So there's our one flower there. We have another flower here get it stamped and then we have our teeniest flower and stamp this here you can also stamp sort of right side up doing the other way um, whatever works best for you so then what I'm going to do is I am going to pop a Stampin' Dimensional here on the back of this one and I'm going to use this one to position my die cut piece there we go not popping over the edge uh, so I suggested that if you have like a little blurb here you might cover up your so little overlap there with the um, die cut. So I'm going to go ahead and position that and then I'm just going to press this down on top so that holds my die cut in place and then I don't have to worry about working too hard to attach that. I'm going to take this little one um, and you can use the mini Stampin' Dimensionals or you can use a regular dimensional and just cut a little piece of the edge in half and stamp that or add that to your die cut and I'll pop this one kind of down below here and you can arrange your flowers and your buttons however you like. And then the button, this last one here, I like to attach with a mini glue dot. And that is going to go right here underneath there, okay? So then we have this we need to attach to our card base. 
and we'll go ahead and pop this across here with some snail adhesive and there we have our finished card so um, I can show you the version with the old olive that is right here this is the old olive linen thread and I really like how that turns out too so lots of different um, possibilities for that uh, if you are looking for a stamps in the mail club kit and you would like to request one you can do that on my website at lovenstamps.com um, the supplies are all from the occasions catalog which will be available through um, May so while supplies last for some of the embellishments and so forth um, but but then they'll retire when the occasions catalog retires at the end of May. And of course, if you love everything you see on the Stampin' Up! website, you should really consider um, joining my Loven Stampfuls demonstrator team because the demonstrator starter kit through the end of March is on a crazy amazing special where you get $175 worth of product for only $99. Uh, so make sure you check my website, um, join my team for more information about that special uh, during celebration. So thanks so much for watching and I look forward to sharing more projects with you soon. Happy stamping! Okay, and this is like the outtakes. So I totally trashed this card sample that I had. You can see right here, I dropped the ink pad on it. <laughs> so sadly, I tried to cover it up with some extra leaves that really didn't fly. So then I decided I was gonna just use the bottom half. So what I did was I cut across here, I took this off, and this, it turns out, is the same size as half of a card front. So I cut my regular card in half, I used this one side because the other side was trash from peeling my card apart. And here I have like a little mini card. So this would be the perfect size to put in, you know, like a registration for a um, team program or something like that just to say a quick thank you. So anyway, I thought I would share that as an outtake. So uh, you can throw away the parts that you're not using, but think about cutting down the parts that you still love and using them. So... And in addition to my outtake, I also promised you another version. So this card is the one that I did in blues. So this is Balmy Blue and Knight of Navy. And the card base for this, um, they come like this. They're from the Happiness Blooms uh, Memories and More card pack, but there are two sizes in there. And the size is just a little bit different. Um, they're blue printed, and then there's awesome envelopes to match. And so I put a piece of white cardstock over the front that we've stamped and did sort of the same kind of design, just in blues. So... Um, remember, you can adapt lots of the things that I show you to the supplies um, that you have on hand or a different mood or um, sort of whatever strikes your fancy. So hope I've inspired you to, uh, you know, use some of your little mistakes and to try something a little bit different from uh, the exact sample that you're seeing. So happy stamping. Bye-bye. For real this time.